Hi there. Welcome to Day 5 of National Procrastination Week. It's Friday, March 10th, and I'm Nancy Morris. I'm the author of the book Procrastinate Now, Rethinking Time Management. And all this week I've been sharing with you the science of procrastination, the real definition of procrastination, and how you can actually use it to your benefit. Use it to get things done. I hope you've had an opportunity to view at least some of the other videos this week. If not, you can use this video as a bit of a recap, but it won't be going into the detail that I did earlier in the week. So I do invite you to go back and check on those videos. So today what I'm going to do is, as I say, recap some of the important points from the last few days, clarify again what procrastination is and isn't, and talk to you about how you can actually use it to create uh, solutions, to create opportunities, to get things done. To actually get things done, we can use procrastination. I know it sounds a little bit strange, but as you will have heard me say before in these videos, all of this is based in science, but science that's not usually shared with other people. I'm on a bit of a mission in my work to eliminate barriers to productivity and profitability in business. And I use the science of psychology to do that. Uh, business and psychology don't often come together, but they are more and more these days. So it's, it's really important uh, from my point of view for people to understand what it is that they're thinking, how they feel, and how their brain works. As you will have heard me say before, I believe that the depth of self-awareness will equal the breadth of success. In other words, the more about you know about yourself and how your brain is working, what you're thinking, etc., the more likely it is that you can make the choices and take the decisions necessary to create the sort of success that you want, however you choose to define that, whether that's at work or at home. And that's what this video series has been about this week, specifically around procrastination, which is one of my fundamental principles in something I call the Morris Code. Um, that is a book series that's coming out. Procrastination is, for me, the number one place to start if you want to build self-awareness. In today's video, as I say, I'm going to recap some of that information, and I'm also going to share with you how it is that you can get a free copy of the paperback version of this book. You can already get the downloadable version at my website, but I want to be able to send you a free copy of the paperback version, and I'll explain how a little bit later. I also have been receiving emails and comments this week, so by uh, using those, I want to explain to you how you can share the information of procrastination with other people whether you're a manager or a small business owner or a, an executive in a large company, or if you just are a person who wants to be able to influence others to your way of thinking. There, of course, influencing is a, is a much bigger subject, but I'm going to share with you how to specifically use procrastination to influence others in a positive way, um, in a positive way for them and in a positive way for you. So we'll get to that in a few minutes, but let's start with, again, looking at what procrastination is and isn't. Let's start with the isn't part. Procrastination is not all avoidance behavior. Over the years, the, the term procrastination has come to mean anything that you're avoiding, you're procrastinating about, and that's just not true. So a very smart cognitive strategy is what we might call mulling. It's the idea of like, oh, I've got this problem, and I want to think about it for a few days, and I want to just let my brain work it out um, while I'm sleeping, while I'm doing other things, while I'm sort of, you know, I'll spend five minutes here and ten minutes there thinking about it. That's mulling. And we usually do that by saying, okay, on Wednesday, I'll make a decision about what I'm going to do next. If you come to Wednesday and you continue to mull, and then like the following Wednesday, you say, oh, no, I'll give it another week. Now, that's procrastination. But if on Wednesday you make a decision and you move something forward, that's been a very smart cognitive strategy on your part, using the power of the creative side of your brain to help you create a solution. So that's not procrastination. It's also not procrastination if in your heart of hearts you're choosing A over B. All day long, you're faced with hundreds, if not thousands, of choices. You can do A or B or C or D. And that is going throughout the entire day. Sometimes you're going to choose to do A over B. Some people might say, oh, well, you're procrastinating about B then. No, no. You simply prefer it. The key here is that you own that preference. Now, of course, you need to check in with yourself. You need to be honest with yourself. Are you, in fact, procrastinating? 
or are you just saying, I prefer A over B right now, and I'll deal with it? Now, the reason why it's important to, to talk about this notion of preference is because the definition of procrastination is quite clear. You're procrastinating when you're avoiding doing a task or a behavior of some sort, knowing that that avoidance is going to have a negative outcome for you. So knowing that there's going to be some sort of negative outcome by choosing to avoid doing something, that's procrastination. If it doesn't have a negative outcome, it's preference. Own it. That's, that's absolutely fine. So, so again, negative outcome. Is there a negative outcome if I choose not to do this thing? So for example, if I choose not to do that report for the boss, is there a negative outcome? Probably, and that's procrastination. But if there's no negative outcome, then you're choosing to do something else instead of the report, and that's fine. No problem there. So, remember, procrastination is not a personality problem. It is not a bad habit. It is not some flaw with you. Procrastination, as the science shows, is actually your higher level thinking telling you that something's not quite right. Much like a fever is an indication of an underlying infection, procrastination is an indication of an underlying fear or concern you have as it relates to the task. It is your sixth sense. It is your smarts telling you that something's not quite right about this task. Something's not quite right about this situation. So then instead of saying, oh, I must stop procrastinating, it's more along the lines of, wow, look at this. I'm procrastinating about this thing. What's bothering me? Why is this causing me concern? What am I afraid of? It's really important to change that mindset about procrastination. Otherwise, you prevent the opportunity to get to the real root, to get to the real problem or concern, and find solutions, structures, systems, whatever, for that underlying problem. It would be like only focusing on the fever and not worrying about the infection. You know, and, and that, of course, is not the route to good health. So... Um, let's look at some of those underlying fears and concerns. Again, very briefly, perhaps you don't trust, like, or respect the person who's giving you the task. Okay? Um, that, that's common in a working environment, but that is something you just need to change your mindset about. You just need to work that through. As is the same with this particular task that somebody's plunked on my desk, has no relevance to me, it's not my goal, I don't care about it. You know what? That's part of working sometimes. It's a mindset shift. Another thing that's important for you is perhaps you don't understand the desired outcome. Perhaps you don't know what the objective is. Or perhaps you're not clear on how somebody wants something done. That's down to you then to go get that clarity either by asking the person or by doing some additional research on your own time, on, on you know, the information that you need to gather for yourself. But what some of the main fears or concerns that show up for people when they're procrastinating relate to their sense of confidence. So are they confident or not in their ability to do the task just generally? Do they, do they have uh, a confidence issue around the task generally? Or perhaps they're concerned that you're going to be judged. Uh, if, if a person feels that they're going to be judged, it's less likely, and, and judged harshly usually, but even sometimes the whole notion of being judged, even if it's going to be positive, will cause somebody to pause and to procrastinate. So that, that fear of judgment comes in as well. There's also a fear of self-judgment. In other words, I'm going to show myself by, by addressing this task that I really don't know what I'm talking about or I don't know how to do this. I gave the example the other day of algebra for me. No clue. And, and so if somebody puts algebra on my desk, or if I have to do something, you know, of an advanced math class, likely it's going to get shoved off to the side until I wrap my head around it. The other thing to remember is that, um, and, and this is one of the important ones, if you feel that what you're being asked to do goes against your core values or who you feel you are as a person, it's very important for you to recognize that and either knowingly choose to move ahead anyway or choosing not to do the task because it's going against who you feel you are. Uh, or if you have a fear that, that doing the tasks will cause you some sort of physical, emotional, or spiritual harm, it, you're, you're likely to procrastinate about that as well. So again, procrastination is your sixth sense. It's your higher level of intelligence telling you that something about this situation is not quite right for you, which is great because then you can say, what is it that's bothering me? 
And then when you figure that out, because it could be one or two or all of the above, probably not all, but, you know, a few of them all at the same time, you're creating opportunities to create more sustainable solutions. Now, remember, I said before, I have studied procrastination for years. I studied business psychology for years. I understand this stuff. I still procrastinate and I love it. I love it when people might, when my clients procrastinate because it gives us so much information. But I still am procrastinating too because I'm not necessarily the same person this week as I was last week. Perhaps something has happened that's caused me some distress. Perhaps I've changed my um, outlook for my business or the sort of work that I want to do. Perhaps I'm just generally unhappy about something else. In, in other words, I'm not the same person. So what I didn't procrastinate about last week, I might procrastinate about this week and vice versa. And that happens sometimes. So procrastination is never going to go away. We've been talking about it since Socrates, if not before. So it's been around forever. If all the tips and tricks in the world worked, we wouldn't be procrastinating anymore. Everybody procrastinates one way or another and always will. And I love it because I think it's a wonderful source of information, as I say. So do not think that procrastination is some sort of problem. It's an opportunity. It's your intelligence. It's your smarts helping you to get where you want to go. So use it, embrace it, and just enjoy the fact that, that you're procrastinating. Don't sit and wallow in it and say, I'm such a bad person. And also don't just sit there and go, oh, wow, look, I'm procrastinating. Okay, and then not do anything next. It is incumbent upon you to ask yourself the questions, what am I concerned about? What am I afraid of? What do I need to accept? Like, for example, you know, I don't like the person. You know, these sorts of things. It's incumbent upon you to now take this information and do something with it, not just sit there, of course. Um, but it's also not something to, to push away or shy away from. Procrastination is a great thing. Remember I said to you that your brain is more um, focused on avoiding pain than gaining pleasure. It's more focused on survival. It's more focused on, you know, uh, short-term stuff rather than long-term stuff. So one of the key strategies that I use with all of my clients, or pretty much all of my clients, in terms of not only helping them build their self-awareness about what the underlying fears and concerns might be, but also about building their confidence in getting things done, is to eat a frog. Yep, eat a frog. Every morning, 15 to 20 minutes, going back to Mark Twain's quote, it's not verbatim here, but if the first thing you do every morning is eat a live frog, you can rest assured that that's the worst thing that's going to happen to you all day. So in other words, do something that you don't want to do first thing in the morning. Why does this work? Because you probably heard of Fear Things First or Eat That Frog or a book by Brian Tracy or something else along those lines. Why does it work? And I want to share this with you again very briefly because I think it's really important that you understand why it works so that you're more likely to do it. Your very creative brain, as I was mentioning just a moment ago, will do things to avoid pain. It will do things to um, put off that which it feels fearful of or has a concern about. So your incredibly powerful brain will spend all day avoiding the task you don't want to do. Instead of using the power of your brain to come up with business solutions or new opportunities or, you know, be creative at work. What it's doing is being creative to avoid the frog that's sitting on your desk, to avoid that task that you don't want to do. That's why at the end of the day, you may have done 20 things, but you still feel dissatisfied or unfulfilled because you know in your subconscious that that thing that you don't want to do is still sitting on the corner of your desk. So if you eat a frog, or as I call frog's legs, in other words, a small part of a bigger project, first thing in the morning before you do anything else at your desk, um, before you open up the emails or voicemails, which are great distractions, by the way, before you do any of that, if you spend 15 minutes doing something that you don't want to do, by the end of the first week, you will start to notice a change in your behavior. Because what's happening is you're moving the noise out of your head that's stopping you. It, you're moving the noise out of the head, out of your head that is contributing to these fears and concerns. And you'll start to build momentum. You'll become more focused, more decisive, and more confident. I find this to be, um, in terms of daily activities that one can do to build confidence, like by far the best thing to do. Eating that frog and showing yourself that you can do it. Work will expand to fill the time that we give it. Meaning, 
if I keep pushing stuff around my desk, including the things that I'm avoiding, you know, it expands. Something that you think is going to take you three hours, you know this has happened to you, right? You think it's going to take you three hours to do. Once you get your nose into the grindstone and you start being focused on it, it takes you an hour or less to do it. So work has expanded to, to, to the time that you've given it, that three hours in your head. So by eating frogs or breaking larger projects down into the smaller 15-minute chunks, what you're going to do is move through the things that, that you don't want to do. You'll move through those fears and concerns, and you'll start to see just how much you can handle and just how confident you are. So by the end of the first week, you'll start to notice that. By the end of the second week, you'll have a lot less frogs sitting there. Now, as I've said, I still have frogs from time to time because I, you know, I'm a different person today than I was last week. And it's great. I love it. I think it's a bit of a game. It's, it's fabulous. So get yourself a frog, a little stuffy frog like this or, or perhaps one of these little ones or something like that. And take a piece of paper at the end of the day and say, okay, this task here is the one that I don't want to deal with tomorrow morning. Take that. Put it on the center of your desk and put your frog on top. Now, if you don't want to get a frog and don't have a frog on your desk, that's fine. Just take the task and put it on the center of your desk so that first thing tomorrow morning, when you get to your desk, you're doing that task for 15 minutes. That's all, that's all I ask is 15 minutes. And it will make a significant difference. This is by far, as I went on about yesterday in the video, this is by far the number one time management tip I give anybody. And I do this because you eat a frog, I don't need to teach you anything else about time management. You don't need to know anything else about time management because you already have everything you need to know about time management. Sure, there's a couple of tips and tricks out there that might be useful for you, but you don't need to know them because you've got a lot of innate intelligence. So let's just go with that. Go with 15 minutes every morning eating a frog and allow your innate intelligence to come through for you. So... That's the quick wrap-up of what procrastination is and isn't, what some of the underlying fears and concerns may be for you, and my number one strategy. Now, in my book, I have mentioned that there are a number of other tips in Section 2 of the book. They are great little tips that I invite you to when you download the book or you get your free copy of the book. You just dive into, you know, every couple of days. You open up the book and just dive into it read it. They're very short. The, the tips are very short. I'm a specialist in something known as microlearning, so the idea is that I present that sort of information in the shortest possible package. So um, just dive into them, read them, choose to do the action or not, and, and use the strategy if it fits for you. The key part of that book is section one, where I explain more of the science of procrastination, including some um, terms that I've not discussed in the video, but will be helpful for you to understand how your brain is actually working. Another coughing break. My apologies for that again. I had one of those yesterday and having another one today I got a bit of a, I know it's a bad pun, I'm sorry. It's a really bad pun. But I have a little bit of a frog in my throat. So um, anyway, back to where we were before. So I've got a couple of um, emails here that I want to share with you that I've received in the last few days from people asking me questions about how they can use this information with others. And now I want to share that with you. So let's look at the first one from a gentleman known as Jackson. He is a marketing manager in a very large company that uh, a number of you would know the name of. And he writes, my team is very creative and usually up to date with their projects. But I noticed that from time to time, everyone is procrastinating about tasks on a certain project, on the same project. What is that all about? So, okay, there's a couple of different things here, but let's look at this. Knowing that people have some sort of fear or concern, what is it about that project, that um, group of tasks, that could be a concern for everybody? Usually, not always, but usually it's more of the global picture of failure. If we fail at this task, if we fail at this project, what could happen? Usually when a number of people are procrastinating about the same thing in the same office, it's because they've all been either uh, through their own volition or because they've been chatting around the water cooler, come up with some fear or concern as it relates to that project. 
So Jackson, here's what I suggest you do. Ask yourself what it is that you're doing or not doing to minimize the possibility of failure of this project or to minimize how you will respond if the team fails on the project, if something goes wrong on the project. They are looking to you. They are, they are looking to their manager, their boss, their supervisor, their guide for direction here. What is it that could go wrong? Question number one, that will affect everybody. And how are you dealing with that situation? It is important to note, and I've said this before and I'll say it again and probably say it for a long time, the energy of the supervisor, the manager, the boss is super important in these situations. Clearly, we all know that. But particularly in the situation around procrastination, people are responding on a global scale to sort of a global fear or concern. So the manager's attentiveness to that is super important here. So what is it that you're doing? Now, when I managed my teams in the past, um, I had a reputation of being known as firm but fair. I'm quite happy with that reputation because people knew that I was going to respond consistently to whatever what was, go was going on. And I was going to do so in a way that, I mean, it's a reputation I have now. I've, I mentioned before, I'm known as being kick-ass with compassion. It is possible to hold somebody accountable and nudge them along while also holding their hand and being respectful and understanding to their specific dilemma, their specific concerns or fears. Being a manager that is firm but fair, being a manager that is consistent, will help people to feel safe and it minimizes their fears and concerns. So Jackson, my question is more to you. It's not about them. Granted, they may be chit-chatting amongst themselves at the water cooler, which cannot be very helpful, but it's likely that they have a fear or concern about what is going to happen to them as a team or how you might respond to the project failing. So using the information about procrastination, using that for yourself to um, look at the culture that you're creating or look at the atmosphere that you're creating around this project and how it might be um, you know, stimulating their fears and concerns, how it might be getting in their way. Don't make any assumptions about this. It is possible to sit down with people and, and talk to them quite openly about fears and concerns they may have about the failure of the project. Use that information to change your own behavior and to change the atmosphere in which these people are working. So that's how I would respond to that generally. Of course, I don't have tons of information. It's a quick question, but I don't have tons of very specific information, but that's how I would deal with something like that. Okay, so if you or anybody else listening to this has a further question or even an idea that I'm not picking up on here, do feel free to share it in the comments below or email me and I'll share it on a video at another time. So my next email was something I get asked a lot um, about this subject and it's more personal, it's more close to home. So this is from David, and he writes, my teenage son puts off his homework, <laughs> okay? Um, he says he loves the rush of last minute work and probably does things better. How can I convince him he's wrong? Okay, first thing, David, never try and convince anybody they're wrong because that's just not gonna work. You're gonna start simulating all sorts of defenses and all sorts of stuff in their head, so, so don't, even, don't even bother doing that. Recognize that sometimes last minute stuff works, for sure, but it's rare. It really is rare because we go with the illusion that we perform better under pressure, okay? That's an illusion for most people. And what you're doing is you're stuffing performance into a minimized timeline and you think you're doing better. Research continually shows that um, and using the same person when asking them to do a project over a longer term versus a shorter term and then having that work in, in some way judged or scored the person with and the judge doesn't know how long the project took and it's usually the research has been done in very creative environments. Um, inevitably, the project that was given more thought and took more time to do and was not jammed into the last minute deadline always scores more. Um, simply because there's more thought and consideration put in. So recognizing that occasionally somebody might get away with 
a good mark on an exam paper or pardon me on a, on a project is fine but over the longer term it's not a sustainable way of being it's it's exhausting it's cognitively exhausting it's physically exhausting and re also more research in stress is really interesting of course because there are the the research around stress about doing something over longer term versus a shorter term is as would be expected those who like to do things at the last minute given a project a month ago to do by a certain deadline those people do not feel stressed at the beginning of the month but of course in the last few days their stress levels go through the roof whereas those people who are less likely to do everything at the last minute their stress levels stay relatively stable over the course of the entire month so in terms of managing stress, because you don't just have one project, do you? You've got lots and lots of projects, even at school. So you don't just have one that you have to worry about. You've got many. So somebody who goes under the illusion that they perform better under stress, they're kidding themselves. They don't. They don't. So share that information with him about that. But also share the information with him about what procrastination is. What this delaying tactic, uh, wrong word, sorry about that. What this tactic of putting everything off to the last minute is really all about. There is an underlying fear or concern. So if you put it off as far as you can, because that's what your brain wants to do is just put it off and get rid of it. You know, just put it over here. I'm not going to pay attention to that. That's what the brain is, is going to be doing. Sharing that information with him. In other words, giving him the knowledge. Always giving people the knowledge and then the means by which they can apply that knowledge in their life. That's the basis of my business is knowledge and application of that knowledge. Share with him what procrastination is. That it's his intelligence. It's his smarts telling him that something's not quite right for him. And then help him understand what his fears or concerns might be this week. And then perhaps next week. Share that with him first. I would not suggest that you overemphasize the idea that, you know, strategically mulling about something is a good idea or the differences between procrastination and preference. Because by the very nature of doing that, sometimes someone will go, oh, well, it's just a preference then. Of course, being the key emphasis is on is there a negative outcome? And usually not doing your schoolwork is going to have some sort of negative outcome for you. Maybe not now, but your marks in the longer term, for example, mean that you don't have options for university or whatever. So you can see where I'm going with that. So start with the explanation of what procrastination is, the science, the signs of intelligence. That's what procrastination is. Because it's been my experience, and I've had this feedback from educators and teenagers themselves. When they've not done something in the past, inadvertently, People have called them lazy or, you know, you just you just sitting on your butt and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So that behavior has become very negative and it's very difficult to own the fact that they might be putting something off. But when you explain to someone, whether it's your teenage per, uh, your teenage child at school, a colleague, a teammate, a friend, when you explain to them that it's a sign of intelligence, when you explain to them that it's their higher level thinking, saying something's not quite for you, quite right for you. When you explain that to someone, I've seen it hundreds of times. There's a change in people's demeanor, their face, everything. There's a relaxation of, wow, okay, I can cope with that. I can recognize that perhaps I'm worried about being judged or I'm going to be judging myself or something along those lines. People can accept that. And when somebody can accept that knowledge, it's more likely that they're going to apply it. So those are just two of the emails that I've received this week. But they're important emails because they cover a, a number of different subjects. If you have any questions at all, I'm going to be making a series of videos following up from National Procrastination Week just on the questions that I'm getting from people, nice short ones, like five minute long emails with one different question in each one. If you have a question, please feel free to share it with me. Um, I'm going to be responding to those emails as quickly as possible. And by your asking the question that perhaps somebody else is thinking, 
you're going to be helping them too. So not only are you going to get the information, but somebody else listening to the video is going to get assistance as well. And you'll be responsible for that. You'll be the one that's helping them get their, their information that they need. So do feel free to either leave a comment as, as uh, leave a question as a comment below or send me an email at nancy at nancymorse.com. Right. So how to get a free copy of the book? Well, as I mentioned, there is a free downloadable copy on my website, nancymorris.com, just on the front page there. Sign up your name and email address, and I'll send you a free copy of the book immediately. You'll get it. It's a PDF, um, the downloadable version, so you can get that right away. Now, for the paperback version, there's two ways you can get your hands on a free copy of the paperback version. Anybody, including Jackson and David, who has this week contacted me about the videos, both on the Facebook page, uh, through private email, text messages, phone calls, etc. I'm putting their name into, into a hat, their name and contact information into a hat. Next week on Tuesday, I'm going to be drawing a name from that and maybe two. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe two names. I don't know. And I will send them a free copy of my book. No problem. And I'll shoot a quick video with the draw of the names. But if you happen to be in an organization, where there's 50 or more employees. All you need to do is send me your name, your contact information at the organization, um, email that to me, and I will send you directly a copy of this book. Um, and that's all you have to do. I don't care where you are in the world. Just send me that email with your all your contact information, the name of the company and stuff, So because I'll be sending it to you at the company. And uh, I will send you a free copy of the book. Remember, 50 or more employees, and I'll send you a free copy of the book. No problem at all. So over the course of the last five days, I've spent a couple of hours with you sharing with you this information. Now, it's down to you now what you're going to do with it next. What I hope you do with it next is, if you didn't do it yesterday, that you do it tonight for Monday, is identify the frog. Identify that thing that you don't want to do. Put it on the center of your desk. And just do it. Every day next week, eat a frog for 15 minutes in the morning. Or a frog's legs if the project is large. Every day. Just a little bit of that project. 15 minutes of the project. Just do that next week. And over the course of this weekend, if you've not already done so, share this information with at least one other person. Even if you don't agree with all or parts of what I've said, share it with somebody else, discuss it, debate it, work it through. The best way to learn is to teach. And I really want for you to teach other people this. And the reason I want that is because in my work over the years, I have found that the way that people discuss with themselves their confidence, their work performance, their way of doing things, is usually quite negative. I'm sure you've heard the saying before, if you spoke to your neighbors the way you speak to yourself, you'd have no neighbors. Procrastination is a behavior. It is a, a that results from your higher level thinking. Everybody does it. Why anybody would spend a nanosecond berating themselves or judging themselves for doing something that their higher level intelligence needs them to do is just to me a complete waste and I really want for everybody to realize that their procrastination is this wonderful signal that they can use to build the systems that help to minimize the fears and concerns that helps them to move things forwards and create the success that they want in life and do so so simply this is not complicated this this is not complicated this is a stuffy frog that's you know it's not complicated and it's something that doesn't cost a dime. You're getting the information for free as well. I mean, it, nothing about this costs any money at all. And you can start doing it right now. You can eat a frog. As soon as you turn off this video, you can go and eat a frog. I mean, first thing in the morning is always better. But you can do one right now and just show yourself how to do it. I mean, it is so simple, so approachable. It's long-term sustainable. And it's easy to do. Anybody can do it. It's, it's so simple, not complicated. Um, it, it's just so easy. So I really want for you to share it with somebody else and help them to understand that they don't need to spend any time feeling bad about themselves or judging themselves negatively 
that they're procrastinating. People talk about stopping procrastination. I don't want you to stop procrastinating. I want you to understand procrastination because you're not going to stop it. You're going to minimize it. Of course, you're going to reduce it to a degree. I don't procrastinate as much as I did 20 years ago, but I certainly do from time to time. You'll never stop it. You'll never eliminate it. So don't be thinking about that anymore. Use procrastination to build the business, the career, the life that you want. Use the information that your innate intelligence is giving you to solve the problems that will inevitably come. That's why this is so important to me. You can tell I'm quite passionate about it. I have seen some amazing results. I've seen people do some wonderful things. And I really want the same for you. That's why I'm sharing this information with you this week. I appreciate that you've given me a couple of hours of your time. I really, really do. I, I sincerely appreciate that. And now I want you to share that information with other people as well. Um, get a downloadable copy of my book as well. There's, As I said, there's more information in there than I've shared on this video. Um, but get a, get a copy of it and share that copy with other people as well or, or give them the address to my website so they can download a copy for themselves. Whatever it is that you want to do with it, I really encourage you to share it with another person. And of course, if you have any questions or comments at any time, feel free to get in touch. I am approachable. I, I have, of course, I have a admin team and, and other people who support me. I have people who, who work with me to help me get things done for sure. But if you send me an email, I am going to read it. And whenever possible, I respond to every email that I get. So please do get in touch. Ask me any question, make any comment, debate me, I don't, whatever. It is absolutely fine. I enjoy it. I welcome it. So please do that. And so go out, take this information and make things simple on yourself. Make them easy. Uh, I've said to you before, you know, give me a week next week, eat a frog every morning. And by next Friday, you'll notice a difference. And if you don't, email me or call me and we'll talk that through because I can guarantee you that within a week, you're going to start to notice a change. And within a month, everything will be different for you. Everything will be different. And that I guarantee. So again, thank you so much for your time. Um, take this information, run with it. If, if you don't want to run with all of it, just run with the parts that mean something to you. That's fine too. I look forward to seeing you on, well, I look forward to getting your comments and your questions. And anybody who contacts me, as I say, will be in the draw for next week on Tuesday of next week. I'm going to draw that name or maybe more. I haven't figured out how many I'm going to draw yet. And I'll send the books off next week. If you're in an organization of 50 people or more, contact me via your business email address and I will send you, you know, with your mailing address and stuff like that, I will send you a paperback copy of the version as well. Anywhere in the world, it's absolutely fine. So thanks again, everyone. And uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Take care.